Adenoid cancer remains an interesting field of investigation for immunotherapy because it is a tumor with high mutational burden and so has the, um, the requisite to be uh, responsive to immunotherapy. And many papers have been presented uh, this year at the ESMO in Madrid, but in my opinion, two main uh, papers uh, deserve uh, uh, more attention. The trial from uh, Haddad is an important trial from the point of view of real life in a clinic because it shows that the patients uh, showing a first progression according to the rest is the criteria may respond to further uh, treatment with nivolumab. And this is a particular interest in, uh, in the real life, of course. The Checkmate 141 study is a randomized phase three trial comparing two treatment arms, immunotherapy with nivolumab given every two weeks or standard chemotherapy with one of selection of three drugs. The study met its primary endpoint of improvement of overall survival uh, for nivolumab compared to chemotherapy. What I presented today was a subgroup analysis of this large study, focusing on the patient on the Checkmate 141 study that were treated beyond progression. And what we were able to show in the presentation today, that there were 15 patients who were treated beyond progression who still responded, who showed tumor shrinkage. So here you have a patient who is getting nivolumab and their scans are getting worse. The decision is made to keep the patient on the treatment and there were uh, 15 patients who still responded on the trial. Of those patients, uh, three patients has a response of more than 30% shrinkage in their target lesion. And that was new information that's relevant to our clinical practice, that here we are showing that in select patient population, treatment beyond progression can be considered. Uh, the overall survival shown in this cohort of patients was more than 12 months. The Ezra Cohen study is a, a much more important from a scientific point of view because it is a completely novel approach to the cancer and it is a, a tentative of targeting both immunocheck points and the mm, tumor microenvironment with these two novel molecules. The idea behind the SCORES trial really was capitalizing on the activity that we've already seen with anti-PD-1 or anti-PD-L1 in squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck. We know that these agents have single agent activity. We know that, in fact, uh, they can improve overall survival in patients with a recurrent or metastatic head and neck cancer. But the activity is still modest, and the majority of patients are not benefiting from these agents. And so the concept of combining different immune modulators with anti-PD-1 or anti-PD-L1 therapies is uh, founded on the idea that we could improve efficacy. The cohort that we're presenting at ESMO involves about 30 patients who were treated with both Dervalumab and the STAT3 oligonucleotide or STAT3 inhibitor. What we found, interestingly enough, was that with the STAT3 inhibitor, we saw an improvement in the response rate that one would not expect to see with Dervalumab alone. We know from the Dervalumab single agent data that the response rate for that drug is somewhere in the range of about 11 to 13 percent. Well, lo and behold, we now see with the STAT3 inhibitor a response rate of almost 30 percent. Not only that, Many of the responses, in fact half the responses, were complete responses, suggesting that in fact we are potentiating the effect of the anti pdl one antibody. The group where we saw the greatest efficacy were patients who had not been exposed to a checkpoint inhibitor, so PD-1, pdl one naive, and now we're being treated with Dervalumab and the STAT3 inhibitor. That's where we appear to be seeing the greatest efficacy and the highest response rates. And perhaps what we're really looking at is a group of patients where their immune system has recognized the tumor 
it's able to respond to the tumor, but anti-PDL1 alone is not enough because perhaps as the T cells are trafficking to that uh, tumor, they're encountering a tumor microenvironment that is very immunosuppressive. And with STAT3 inhibition, at least in a group of those patients, we're able to overcome that.